Hey, welcome to the Eddie Hyatt Podcast. I'm your host and teacher, Eddie Hyatt. And I want to share with you today about the sustaining power of God's Word. And I, I have some powerful scriptures to share with you, and I'm going to relate it to uh, a challenging experience I've had for over a three-month period, beginning Thanksgiving, November the 22nd. Uh, during this three-month period, now this was totally unexpected, and it seemed like it just came like well, just one thing after another. I had been in hell for 30 years, uh, but during this three-month period, I had two urinary tract infections. I don't know if, I, if I'd even ever heard of such a thing. One of them hospitalized me for uh, an entire week. Then I had my, my uh, a urinary blockage completely blocked up which resulted in several visits, a total of six visits to the ER. In its situation, you're there lying on a bed for several hours waiting for tests, uh, waiting for, to be released. Uh, also resulted in three different visits to the urologist. It resulted in six different catheters being worn over um, a five-week period. Uh, and then in the midst of all this, I had the COVID virus. And, um, I, and then finally I had surgery uh, a week ago this past Tuesday. And I am doing well right now. I am um, uh, very much getting back uh, to normal. And, uh, and as I've told everybody, I'm coming through this and I'm going to be stronger and better uh, after coming through it stronger and better. But what I wanted to share with you about today is the sustaining power of God's Word. Now, I can say that I was never discouraged all this time. I was never despondent. Now, I was disappointed on different occasions, but I was never discouraged. Um, there were there was a couple of just for just brief moments where I I I felt like I was saying, God, what, what is going on? Why, why is this happening? And felt a little bit down. But 99% of the time, I, I was up. I was encouraged. I was expectant. And the reason was I kept my mind focused on God's promises. Now, back, it's been now, I guess, 35 years ago, I had a health challenge, a very serious one. And in seeking God at that time, I had a, a visitation of God, and God spoke to me about three keys to answered prayer. And they are promise, praise, and perseverance. I actually have put that whole story down in a little book called Three Keys to Answered Prayer. It's available on Amazon and on our website at eddiehite.com. I don't have one here to show you. Promise, praise, and, and perseverance. And I knew at the time God was saying, related to, to promise, that I was to keep my mind focused on the promise. I was not to be preoccupied with the problem. I wasn't to deny the problem, but I was not allow, not to allow the problem to take a hold of me and occupy my thoughts and my attention. I was to occupy my mind with God's promises. And I would surround myself to praise. I was not to allow myself to become despondent and discouraged. I was to surround myself with praise, and then I was to persevere. Persevere means to continue in the face of difficulty and adversity. And my friends, we live in a fallen, sinful world, and we are going to have difficulties and adver adver adversities in life, and we are going to have to learn to persevere. But first of all, we got to learn to control our mind, to control our emotions. People who live on, on their emotions, who do not learn to discipline their minds, they will, and I'm talking about Christians, they will be continually going through disp uh, discouragement, despondency, and uh, and just living an up and down life. So throughout this whole ordeal, 99% of the time, I was I felt fine inside. I was encouraged because I was continually filling my mind with God's promises of healing, of deliverance, and of answered prayer. I mean, lying there the week I was in there for a, a whole week. And even when I was in for hours at the ER, I would lie on the bed 
And, and two things I would do, I would also think on God's character, his attributes, his, his unlimited power, his omnipotence, his, his goodness, his faithfulness, his kindness, uh, all of the attributes of God that I could bring to my mind, I would think about God and his, his, his attributes and his character. And many times I felt so lifted <laughs> in my spirit that I would, it would bring me into a place of, of worshiping him and praising him. And then thinking also on the promises of God. Now, there is one particular I, I want to share with you today. And at some point, I've got to do a whole teaching on this. But I want to just share with you, I want to encourage you today with a, a passage that really came alive to me during this time. I was very aware of it, but I got fresh insight into it and, uh, and, and, and received fresh encouragement from it. And it's a Psalm of David in Psalm 103. And, and listen to this. And David talks about us. He exhorts us not to forget all of God's benefits. You know, it's a big thing today when you get a job. It's not only about the salary, it's also about the benefits. <laughs> what are the side benefits like health insurance, life insurance, vacation pay, um, IRAs, retirement, and all of these, these benefits? Well, there are benefits to serving God. And David told us about five benefits. And this is one of those passages from the Word of God that sustained me during, during this three-month ordeal of facing one challenge, it seemed, after another. And I'm going to begin reading, and I'm, I'm going to read through uh, uh, Psalm 103, starting at verse 1 and verse 5, and then I'm going to comment on them. So listen to this. David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, yeah, all that is within me, not a half-hearted blessing the Lord, not a half-hearted praise, but with all that is within me, bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, well, I'll go ahead and read them like I said. Who, who forgives all your iniquities. Some translations say sins, same thing, iniquity, sins. Who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Wow. So there are five benefits. He says, "For bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then he lists five benefits. And each one is introduced with who. Of course, the who is talking about God. Who does these things? So now let, let's look at these five benefits. The first one says, who forgives all your iniquities. That is the most wonderful of all benefits. If you have not received that benefit from God, come to him today with an honest, sincere heart, with a repentant heart, and ask Him for forgiveness. It is a benefit that belongs to you that's been provided by the Lord Jesus Christ and His redemptive death on the cross. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your iniquities. Here's the second benefit, who heals all your diseases. Third benefit, who redeems your life from destruction. That word redeem, the Hebrew word means to buy back. It was used in the ancient world of the price that was paid for the freedom of a slave. A slave, if he could come up with the money or if some of his, if a friend or a family member could come up with the money, uh, there was a redemption price, then he could be redeemed out of that awful situation that he or she was in. And the Bible says that one of the benefits of serving God and knowing God, He redeems your life from destruction. I may be talking to somebody that you're in a destructive situation right now. It may be in a relationship. It may be a marriage. It may be a, a job. Could be a, 
a whole slew of different things, maybe a financial destructive situation. One of the benefits of God is that he redeems us. He redeems your life from destruction. Turn to him today with all of your heart. Meditate on on his word. Meditate on his character, his goodness. One of his benefits is who redeems your life from destruction. Hallelujah. The fourth benefit, who crowns you (laughs) with loving kindness and tender mercies. You know, I was sharing in a Bible study like night. This is, this is a characteristic of God that I want to think on, that I desire to understand more. You know, because we've heard so much. Yeah, we hear about God's love we, and, and we hear about the wrath of God and so on. But there, there is something in this about a, a softness and a tenderness of God towards his people. And this is one of the benefits that David mentions, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. And somebody listening to me, you, you, you need to experience some of that, some of those tender mercies of the Lord, his loving kindness. And I pray for you right now, Lord, I ask you to touch somebody listening to this video, touch their heart right now with your loving kindness and your tender mercies and draw them to yourself in Jesus name. And the fifth, And final benefit that David mentions, he says, who renews, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, I remember in Isaiah 40, talks about uh, the eagle and it says, those that wait upon the Lord. Now that's talking about not talking about passivity. It's talking about to, to look and to wait expectantly. Those who wait expectantly upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall melt up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I remember reading years ago somewhere that an old eagle, I don't know if this is is true in every situation, but according to this writer, an old eagle will often, uh, the oil stops flowing and giving uh, his wings and his feathers that suppleness and softness that is needed for flying. And he can no longer soar like he once did. And he goes into a cave. And he sits there in the darkness of the cave waiting. He may pull out some of those old dried feathers that are no longer of any use to him. And and he, he sits there waiting. And after a while, the new feathers, they begin to grow in. And the oil, the fresh oil begins to flow. (laughs) And he emerges out of the cave, out of the cave, and he spreads his wings, and he begins to soar once again. And I think maybe David had something like this in mind when he said, he fills your mouth, one of the benefits of God. He fills your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Now, probably a lot of you listening to me, uh, uh, you you are getting on up in age like, like I am, Sue and I. Uh, but I don't call us senior citizens. I like to call us seasoned citizens because we've been through. We've seen a lot. We've been there and done that. And the younger generation, yeah, we need their strength and their energy and vitality, but they need our wisdom that we have gained through experience. And um, and and I'm probably talking to somebody you've kind of, uh, because maybe you don't have the energy and the vitality you once had, uh, maybe you're kind of pulling back and becoming passive in the things of God, I want to pray for you now that God is going to renew your strength and you will once again mount up with wings like an eagle. So that is just one of the passages I want to sh- I wanted to share with you that I spent so much time um, while I was hospitalized and, and lying in, in the emergency room over the last three months 
but meditating on God's word. And truly, I think I can say with Jeremiah, Jeremiah in uh, 15, 16, he said, thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Oh, my friends, take a hold of God's word today. No matter what you're going through, find the promises of God that relate to your situation and begin to think on that promise, begin to meditate on that promise and even begin to speak forth that promise. Uh, and, and, and that has nothing to do with where you're at. It's, it's, it's where you want to go. The promise will take you where you want to go because God is faithful to his word. He's faithful to his promises. I'm Eddie Hyatt. This is the Eddie Hyatt podcast. Um, if you'd like to connect with me, friend me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook. I think it's Eddie L. Hyatt, Grapevine, Texas. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, I'm on Twitter. And uh, I guess it's now called X. I'm also on LinkedIn. And uh, if you'd like to join my wife Susan's Facebook group, she calls it her classroom. Uh, it, uh, it is on, on uh, Facebook. It's called God's Word to Women. There's over 5,000 people on there. There are daily posts of uh, encouraging testimonies and uh, teachings from God's Word. to be a great blessing to you. God's Word to Women on Facebook. Check out uh, our website. It's my name, eddiehyatt.com. Uh, we have a bookstore there. Our books are all available on Amazon. And I will look forward to... Yeah, yeah. Sue was just reminding me there's a prayer time. I lead every Tuesday morning. I lead a hour of prayer live online. You can access it on my Facebook page. Um, an hour of prayer, praying for revival in America and around the world. Only a genuine heaven sent revival is going to save America. We must have a visitation of God. So if you're concerned about America or you're concerned about Canada, Mexico, or the country you live, because we pray for nations all over the world, then join me uh, each Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. Central Time on my Facebook page, and uh, we will stream live and we will pray for revival in America and around the world. Hey, God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next time.